Good evening and welcome to Altos, your weekly Catholic news program right here on Trinity TV and now showing on the national television station TTT. I'm Neil Parsonlal and on this International Women's Day we wish all our viewers a happy International Women's Day. Now here's a look at our top stories. More chaos in Haiti as three Catholic nuns are kidnapped and released the day after. We will update on this situation. Preaching, praise, and pan, an unbeatable combination. We visit two venues for Panyard Lenten retreats. The 24th anniversary of Archbishop Anthony Panton's death is coming up. And later on, on this International Women's Day, we interview attorney Christian George for a very interesting perspective. And now for our top story. Crisis in the Caribbean nation of Haiti this past week, as three Catholic nuns from the St. Joseph of Cluny congregation were kidnapped and released the day after. This amidst an ongoing and rapidly escalating political, economic, and social crisis. Over the past week, there has been a significant upsurge in violence and uncertainty as gangs are increasing their control. Catholic News Editor Raymond Sims prepared this report. The spate of kidnappings for ransom in Haiti hit home for the Sisters of St. Joseph of Cluny in the Caribbean, as three Haitian sisters from the congregation were kidnapped by gang members on March 5th. Armed bandits had stormed the La Madeleine orphanage in Port-au-Prince. Confirmation came from the Cluny Mother House in Paris, France, to the sisters in Trinidad and across the region. The area where the attack took place is under the control of the 400 Mawozo gang, according to Vatican News. Thankfully, the three sisters were released Wednesday 9 p.m. with no ransom being paid. On Thursday, March 7, Vatican News reported that beyond political power, many institutions, including the Catholic Church, have fallen victim to insecurity and gang violence. Gangs have attacked police stations and over 5,000 inmates are on the loose following an armed attack on March 2nd against the National Penitentiary and the Civil Prison. A prominent gang leader announced during an online media intervention on March 5th that gang hostages will be released without ransom. However, six members of the Sacred Heart Congregation, including five religious brothers abducted on February the 23rd, are yet to be released. I am Raymond Sims for Catholic News Altos. On February 28th, Pope Francis called for prayers for Haiti. We too join the church and the region in praying for an end to the violence in Haiti. The Exodus Spaniard in Tunapuna came alive earlier this week for the outdoor Lenten crusade hosted by the St. Charles R.C. Church, Tunapuna Parish, in the suburban Vicariate. Just back from Grenada, Father Robert Christo spoke on forgiveness. Once you take forgiveness out of circulation, you're born again. I cooked. Unforgiveness blights your future. And those who forgive most will be most forgiven. The reason why this mess is such a revenge. Nobody wants to take it out of circulation. If only you understand, if God has been merciful to you, why don't you not want mercy on other people? And there was more preaching and pan, this time in Port of Spain. The annual three-night panyard retreats hosted by Holy Rosary Parish Community ends tonight at, Char at the Charlotte Street Panyard of Joint Panorama Champions, BP Renegades. On Wednesday, the retreat was held at fellow joint champions, Trinidad All-Stars. Here's a short bit from the opening night on Monday at the impressive Desperados Pan Theatre on George Street. of two parties could still bring hope whether two 
becomes one plus one. You know what I'm talking about? You, you're sure? Whatever confusion we are in, my dear brothers and sisters, there's hope. There will always be hope if we praise God as we did. The theme for the three nights was faith, hope and love as an oasis for desert times. You can also visit catholictt.org or pick up a copy of the Catholic News for a listing of parish Lent and retreats that are still going on. Tuesday, March 12th, will make 24 years since the passing of Archbishop Gordon Anthony Pantin, the first local bishop of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain. In 2013, the church in Trinidad and Tobago began the first phase of the process towards its beatification and canonization. This is called the diocesan phase. A lot of work has already gone into the cause which examines the life, death and demonstration of intercessory power of the servant of God. Several witnesses have been interviewed and Archbishop Pantin's writings reviewed by two theological experts. An historical commission has also worked on a report on the life of the late Archbishop. When completed, everything from the diocesan phase will be, will be prepared and sent to Rome for examination in the Roman or second phase. Father Christopher Lumsden is the postulator, that is, the person guiding the judicial process of the cause. The local church continues to pray for the success of this cause. And in news from the parishes, St. Dominic's R.C. in Penal had reason to celebrate two of their parishioners, Ciceran and Dora Gowry, who received a papal blessing on their 60th wedding anniversary. The blessing was presented to the Gowrys by parish priest Father Robert Christo. Their son Simon and daughter Anne-Marie were also there for this special occasion. Members of the St. Dominic's community for most of their lives, Simon remembers his father wakening him and his siblings every Sunday to attend Mass. His mother, he said, taught baptismal classes and had sweet stalls at various church harvests in South Trinidad. The Gauris have three children and six grandchildren. Congratulations to them on their wedding anniversary. And in other parish news, we join with the Catholic community in Mova Laventil to celebrate the 100th birthday of Nellie Jackdale. Jackdale is the mother of four, grandmother of 20, great-grandmother of 21, and great-great-grandmother of one. She was born on February 28, 1924 in Success Village Laventil. Known for her compassion and hard work, she's the cornerstone of her family, providing unwavering support to each generation. An integral member of the Mova Laventil and Catholic communities, she has led prayer groups and volunteered for many charitable causes. Congratulations, Nelly, and we wish you many, many more years. A 40% increase in sales of the Catholic News led to the Church of the Holy Spirit in Malabar, Arima, winning the Catholic News Christmas Parish Greenscape promotion, which ran from November 17th to December 31st, 2023. The $10,000 value beautification from SF Landscaping Services will be executed this year. On Tuesday, the Catholic Media Services Limited General Manager, Catherine Tardieu, was present at the sponsors presented parish priest Father Kizito Amiloko with the prize. Camsell presented persons on the parish team with potted plants as tokens for driving their parish to win. Father Amiloko singled out parishioner Mona Jones for suggesting the parish participate and win. He told the Catholic News how the prize may be used. Looking at the, 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 uh, the environment, I think we have some other places around that we, we feel that maybe could be, could be, yeah, could be enhanced and it will add to the beauty of the, 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 the whole environment. Today is International Women's Day. Pope Francis recently addressed participants of an international conference titled Women in the Church, Builders of Humanity. Here's a report, courtesy Rome Reports. Pope Francis once again emphasized the irreplaceable female role in the church, but this time during a private audience with participants of an international conference titled Women in the Church, Builders of Humanity. 
Due to his ongoing health issues, Pope Francis's remarks were read by his aide. The words he had prepared emphasized the unique capacity for love that women have, saying that in this time of war, the female contribution is more indispensable than ever. The Pope's words also emphasized the suffering and injustice that many women around the world are facing. C'è una forma grave di discriminazione che è proprio legata alla formazione della donna. Essa è infatti temuta in molti contesti. Ma la via per società migliori passa proprio attraverso l'istruzione delle bambine, delle ragazze e delle giovani, di cui beneficia lo sviluppo umano. The conference, which gathered individuals from all over the world, focused on highlighting the exemplary holiness of ten women, including Saints Josephine Bakita, Elizabeth Ann Seaton, Mary Kateri Tekawitha, and St. Teresa of Calcutta. It's now time for a short break, and when we come back, we welcome to the set for the first time attorney at law Christian George, who will stay who will be with us for a little bit talking about International Women's Day and a very unique project. As we go, though, take a look at this week's Catholic trivia question and see if you can come up with the correct answer. Welcome back. We hope you were able to get our simple trivia question this week. And we welcome to the set attorney at law, Christian George, who served as a student coordinator for the Tallman Foundation, an initiative begun by the mother of Anya Ayongchi, Michelle Jordan Ayongchi, after a kidnapping experience. Yes, thank you very much. Difficult having me. time? What, was the, what gave birth to the, the Tallman Foundation? Tell us a little bit more about the foundation. All right, so Tallman, the Tallman Foundation is an NGO that has been based in Gonzales, an environment, environs mm -hmm. that's geared towards giving youth in the area a chance to grow and develop through the arts. So what that basically means is that young men and women were given the opportunity to try something new, meaning they could have gone to the various workshops or classes available for free, that the, the, these were sponsored. This would have included either dance, and that dance included hip hop, uh, dance hall, contemporary or modern music. They could have learned to play the guitar. Um, they, they could have done vocal training at the Marinette's Chorale. Um, we had drama at the Little Put Theatre, or even engage in videography or photography. And, and it's important that we speak about those initiatives because, of course, the, given the, the, the current crime situation, but what is particularly important for us on this International Women's Day is that a significant portion of the Tallman Foundation was, in fact, women. Yes. So Michelle, together with her close friends and acquaintances and her family, mm -hmm created and spearheaded this initiative with the support of members of the community, including persons like the now uh, Bishop, Archbishop Jason, and um, now Archbishop in Grenada, Father Clyde Harvey, or Bishop Harvey. Bishop Harvey. Mm -hmm. he's all, he'll always be Father Harvey to me because yeah, he yeah. was my parish priest for many years. Okay. So there was definitely the support of the church and everyone in the community. But in, in terms of women, the, the, the majority of this group is women. They, why, did it, why was it important, for, in, the, in your estimation, for, the, for women to be spearheading this, the, this organization in, in an area that was so riddled with crime that people feel you know, the, the people like women should not be walking in those areas? What was the input? Why was it important for women to become involved? Well, I believe Michelle and uh, the rest of the committee, yes, it was mainly, con mainly consisted of women. We saw the need to build bridges between the 
the members in that society and and also to give young people the chance to do something that they have never done before mm -hmm. give people give this young these young children these young people a chance to broaden their horizon broaden their reality mm -hmm. of what can be done and what they can do and not just limit themselves to their their own four walls mm -hmm. there's much more of the world that is theirs for the taking yeah. and it just needed a, a impetus of uh if it meant carrying someone to a class or paying for someone to try something new because their parents probably didn't have the availability or of funds to do that. Mm -hmm. So it really was a matter of putting, it really wasn't an ego. This not, it was not, nor was it a charitable situation where these children or these young people were considered charity cases. Yeah. So, so it wasn't a question of feeling pity and, 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 and oh, sorry definitely for them, but not. Really, really a sense of empowering people to see that there was a world beyond Gonzales and East Dry River, yes? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And the name of the foundation is the Tallman Foundation. Yes. The Trinidad, we, we give people nicknames all the time. Yes. So you see a tall man walking down the road, he's yes. tall man. Yes. Yeah? What was the impetus behind that name, the Tallman Foundation? Well, I will focus on the, uh, how should I say? So in its initial stages, I, I would imagine that there were many tall people in the class, or tall men in the class, and as you said, nicknames are all the easiest thing to be associated with uh, a young man. So, tall man. But also, tall man is not just about someone's height. Mm -hmm. It's about standing tall in society. Our watchwords are stand tall, reach further, and see beyond. So stand tall, have the confidence to try and to do and to be. Be your authentic self. Be who you, you want to be. Have the confidence to go into new spaces and take up space. Working with Tree Canal, which Tallman has been doing for many years, we worked with Wendell Man Warren, and he has been able to build and expand the minds of many of the young students mm -hmm. that came through, that, that were a part of Tallman. And just a matter of your, your, your posture, don't slouch, mm -hmm. stand tall. And that changes your... That changes the perspective. Yes. And, you know, we speak of, if, you know, standing, you know, on the shoulders of giants. And in that way, we can see, we can see further. People like Wendell and, and the Three Canal Movement and uh, who speak the language of our young people and are able to communicate with them and, you know, that, that much easier. How successful do you think the Tallman Foundation has been you know, in, in terms of its efforts when we still see the amount of crime and the, the, the murders? Just recently, you had the, the death of Ezekiel Parry, an 11-year-old boy riding his bike like normal 11-year-olds you know, do and killed by a stray bullet in the very same area. How successful and, and, and how much more you think ought to be done or could be done? Okay, so Tall Man Foundation's success has, is international. We have students who have, who have passed through um, the foundation that are now working and doing uh, and thriving in Dubai. Um, we have Kamal and, and Ishmael who are May, they are forging their way in Dubai and in Dubai's entertainment industry. Um, we have many success cases where we have dancers like Kevon Charles, who was recently a, a part of Mikel Taja's um, music video for mm -hmm. DNA, and he has come through the program, started with doing dance, he's danced for other soca artists. We have uh, many other young men. Mm -hmm. We, we mentioned uh, Trikanal, we have persons like Mugabe and Shumaki Thomas, brothers, who were quite mischievous and sometimes stubborn, and they are now, as they have grown, the opportunity that Tallman gives you is the opportunity to try, fail, but try again. And you learn through that, and you grow, and they have now blossomed into young men. So. The success and that success continues to pay dividends. Mm -hmm. Take for example me. I started off as a student, 
and doing videography and photography and I've gone on to become a lawyer I'm now practicing for about seven years so the success that Tallman has is more than and it's not just a matter of giving people a chance to do a workshop it's giving students or young people a chance to see beyond to see beyond the we, we've concentrated on the on, on the boys on the young men how has this foundation and we speak of international women's day how has this foundation spoke you know spoken the very same language to the young women and girls in those areas oh uh listen i will continue to sing the praises that this NGO has impacting on young men and women we in addition to all the workshops i mentioned previously we had a mentorship program where every friday we would have engaged with, with talks and this allowed everyone in the in the program at the time to speak with uh, facilitators ernest and kevin and allowed us to talk about our problems talk about um, current situations talk about um, handling anger, talk about um, navigating through the world. So this allows or gives a space, a safe space for not just men and uh, but for the women and young girls as well to try. And but with dance, you get to you get to um, form networks, form connections, and. We have female dancers who have con continued to dance. Mm -hmm. We have people like Joanna Thomas, who is now a stalwart in Marinus Chorale, and she has brought on others, and it continues. So it's a matter of each one helping one. Yeah. The, the Tallman Foundation has, it, 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 you, have, you have done your work, but what's next for the Tallman Foundation? Where, where do you see as yourself going? Where does this, this foundation see itself, let's say five years from now? What's the objective? Well, we're currently inactive, but that is a temporary state. I am certain Michelle and others, including myself, would um, revamp and try again and get a new, fresh cohort, but that's going to take some effort. Um, but definitely the, the template and our, our support is there. So let's see. Let's see what's... 2024 and beyond has for us. Certainly. And on International Women's Day, what do you, young, bright attorney, who has come through that, 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 that the Tallman Foundation and benefited from the Tallman Foundation, what do you have to say to the young women and girls in that East Dry River in, area? All right. Well, I want to go back to Tallman's motto, stand tall, stand tall in life, stand tall in your in your roots, stand tall in who you are. See beyond, reach further. Your current situation is not your permanent situation. And use whatever opportunities you have and try and set a plan for yourself. Because just because you're having a bad day today or just because you're, your situation is not the best doesn't mean that you have to stay in that situation, yeah? And we are the sum of our choices. Mm -hmm. We are the sum of the, who we are today. It's the sum of choices we've made. What do you say to the young men still living in East Dry River, to the young men still living behind the bridge, and about the choices that they should be making as they go forward? OK, so young men or boys are a bit, their thinking is a little bit different. So. But I will still use the same words, stand tall, reach further, see beyond. See beyond, your, so it may be difficult to say that, it may be easy to say that and when you're in this situation you find yourself well. Yeah. But reach out. What Tall Man has is with the mentorship program we had was the ability to talk to someone who is not there to show blame, they're not there to criticize, they're there to support and to enhance and uplift. So find someone in your community who could be your, your if you don't have a, a, a parent that you want to talk to in, a, about a certain topic, find someone who you can get that support from and build that relationship. So in essence, 
you have to look down the line and see, do I want to continue this or do I want to reach beyond? Reach, reach beyond. And, they, and, and we say that to all our young men. They you know, find the space, the safe space, and the church will continue to do its part in providing safe spaces, providing the opportunities and the, and, and, and the, 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 the wherewithal in, in a number of cases so that young men can, in fact, see beyond and stand even taller. Christian, thanks very much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again at some Thank point so in time. And we can talk a little bit more about the, the tall man. Foundation. I would love to come back, yes. Good. It's good, good having you. Thanks very much. We take a short break. We'll be right back. Altos, from the Latin altos, meaning high. Every Friday night, we feature the top news items hot off the press. We are taking a leap of faith on Trinity TV. Jump in with us for this new and exciting experience. Thanks very much for staying with us. Registration has started for the inaugural Catholic News Steps for Hope 5K and 1K Run and Walk. The race is open to all and will be staged on May 11th, starting and ending opposite Archbishop's House on, at the Queen's Park Savannah. We are encouraging parishes and schools to sign up and enter teams of 10 or more. I'm a runner. Of course I run the Savannah. I'm a runner. Of course I have more than one running shoes. I'm a runner. Of course I just run every chance I get. The Catholic News is staging its first 5K on Saturday, May the 11th. We want you to participate. The race starts and ends at the Queen's Park Savannah. Registration has started. It's open to everyone. You can go to buffersports.com. And we invite you all to come and join us on that day. Here's a look at some upcoming events in the Archdiocese. And we join Catholic News Associate Editor Simone de Lochan for a sneak preview of what's in this week's edition of the Catholic News. In the Catholic News of March 10th, columnist Daniel Francis talks about a man learning to lead his family through his own introspection and personal change. And attorney at law Jonathan Bagan highlights the great Christian theologians who emerged from the continent of Africa. All this and more. I am Simone de Lochon, Associate Editor of the Catholic News. So we thank you for tuning into Altos. Remember, you can see us now on both Trinity TV and on TTT. The program is aired on TTT at 9.30 on Sunday mornings and at 12.15 on Wednesdays. As we close this week's program, we leave you with our Lenten prayer intercession, asking God for forgiveness and mercy. See you next week. Please, God. Our Lenten prayer intention this week forgiveness and mercy lord we pray today for forgiveness and mercy heavenly father we bring before you the specific sins that weigh us down we are sorry for the times we have disrespected ourselves lied cheated and hurt others we ask for your forgiveness and mercy as we seek to turn away from these actions Thank you, Lord, for the promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive. Grant us the power to live in the freedom of your forgiveness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.